This film is intended for eye surgeons for training and education purposes. Viewer discretion is strongly recommended. Hi, this is an 85-year-old elderly male patient who has presented with a phacomorphic glaucoma. The antechamber is extremely shallow and he has got a swollen intumescent lens. The pressure at presentation was around 50 mm of mercury and the eye was inflamed. With all the medications and the inflammation and the pressures being controlled, the surgery is being done and the pressure today is around 16 after IV mannitol. Surgery is being done under posterior septinous anesthesia and I've planned a fake emulsification to be performed in this case and let's see how things turn out. The challenge here is to get the rexis right, that's the main challenge. And if the rexis is alright then I am going to continue with fake emulsification otherwise I need to go back to an alternative technique. So let's see how things turn out. The chamber is deepened uh, with the dispersive OVD following the staining of the anti-capsule. To ensure that I don't have any extension of the rexis, I am aiming at a smaller initial rexis and then maybe try the whirling technique or then do a two-staged rexis. The anti-capsule is punctured with the Ben 26 Nimba needle and I switch to forceps now. The aim is to make an initial small 3mm rexis and then maybe take a call whether to continue the rexis using the whirling technique or do a two-staged rexis. Since the control of the rexis was quite good, I thought I'll continue and enlarge the rexis using the whorling technique and thankfully I had a decent sized rexis which also is relatively well centered. And time to deal with the nucleus. Uh, the nucleus will be slightly mobile and it's not very soft so it has got some density. So my standard technique if I'm using a torsional ultrasound machine is to sculpt the nucleus a little bit so that I can bury the thin tip into as deep a core as possible and then perform vertical chop. During the nucleus division techniques, I take extreme care to lift up the nucleus when my second instrument is chopping. This is to minimize any stress on the posterior capsule or the bag during the chopping as well as the lateral separation maneuvers. Because we need to remember that these eyes have extremely flimsy capsules and are always vulnerable for tearing. So great care and caution needs to be exercised when trying to divide this nucleus. Once uh, I have around 5 to 6 fragments, time to emulsify each of these fragments. Now this is the easier part of the surgery. The most difficult aspect is to get the rexis right and also to divide the nucleus into smaller fragments. During fragment removal, obviously the care has to be taken to minimize endothelial trauma. So we need to be at the right plane and use a lot of dispersive OVD. Uh, the cortex is aspirated out and uh, before putting the lens I'd always like to put a CTR into this eye because these eyes do have a compromised zonule so I would always prefer to have a ring inside. Then a hydrophilic single piece intraocular lens is placed into the bag. The OVD is just washed off, the side ports are hydrated and uh, that's it the case is done. And these are the first day pictures of the patient. There is some corneal edema, not much of an inflammation, but it will settle down and the patient is having a visual acuity of around 624 now and hopefully it will improve and it will do fine. Thank you for watching and hope you found this helpful.